Good afternoon students. I am Dr. Abhinav from Ames New Delhi and today I have come here to talk to you about you. What, what do I mean by that? I am here to talk to you about your story. So that is your neural system. What are we? We are what our brain is, right? So what, what all we think, what all we see, what all we do, what all we perceive, it is all related to our brain. It is all done by our brain. So today I am here to talk to you about your brain and along with your brain, the associated structures, for example, your spinal cord, your neurons, your nerves, your glial cells. So these all structures are comprised in the human neural system. So today we'll be talking about human neural system. So let's start. So human neural system, it, for our easy study, it can be divided into two parts. That is the CNS and your PNS. CNS, what do I mean by the CNS? CNS is the central neural system. Central neural system. It comprises of two structures, your brain and your spinal cord. So CNS comprises of your brain and your spinal cord. The CNS, it is the site of your information processing and your control. Whatever information is being processed or it is controlled, it is to be done by your brain, mainly your brain and partially by your spinal cord. So these both structures comprise the CNS. The rest of the neural system, it means your nerves, your plexuses and what all structures are there, they are comprised into the PNS. PNS is peripheral neural system, peripheral neural system. So PNS can again be divided into somatic neural system and your autonomic neural system. Your somatic neural system will comprise of the nerves which will take information from your CNS that is from your brain and your spinal cord towards your skeletal muscles. So your brain and your spinal cord will give command. For example, if you have to go take a walk, so what all muscles are needed? Your leg muscles, your thigh muscles, they are needed. So your brain will give a command to your neurons. Your brain will give a command to the nerves to go and excite the musculature of your legs, the musculature of your hind limbs. So the structure which will take that information, the structure which will relay that information from your brain or your spinal cord till your muscle, that structure, it is comprising the peripheral neural system and what part of PNS exactly? Your somatic neural system. So somatic neural system will take your command from your CNS to your skeletal muscle. Now there's another part of your PNS that is your autonomic neural system. You can remember it by like saying autonomic like sounds about like automatic. It means you can't control it by your conscious effort. You can't say it ki do this or do that. No, it will work automatically. So for example, there are some structures in your body which continuously need to be, their action continuously needs to be monitored or changed over time, tuned over time. For example, your heart rate, your breathing pattern, your pupillary dilation, your digestion. These all things are to be coordinated time to time. Like sometimes your heart needs to beat faster. Sometimes your heart needs to beat a little bit slower. So these actions which are continuously being monitored and controlled, they are done via the autonomic neural system. Autonomic neural system. So this system relays the information from your CNS. Again, the information processing site is again CNS, CNS only. Information processing site is CNS. So the information will be relayed from your CNS to your involuntary organs and smooth muscles. So involuntary, involuntary means you can't control it voluntarily. You can't tell your heart, okay, right now I need to beat 10% 10, 10 faster. No, you can't do that. If your body senses that your heart needs to beat faster, it will automatically send the signal via the ANS, via the autonomic neural system to make your heart beat faster. Okay, so what is a neuron? Neuron is your structural and functional unit of your entire neural system. So neuron is the structural and functional unit of your neural system. So we'll study in detail about neuron, the separate parts of the neuron. There are different, different structures that comprise of neuron. What are their functions? How do they work? How is action potential generated? So these all things are there which you need to learn very carefully. You need to understand them if you want to retain that information. You can't mug up that information. You have to learn it. You have to understand it. Plus, th this is a classical example where biology meets physics and chemistry. 
so we learned about charge here we learned about voltage here we learned about current here so that all sphere of physics is merged with biology in this system so let's start i'll make it very easy for you i'll give you some real world examples so that you can easily remember it easily memorize it okay so let's start so your neuron is the structural and functional unit of your neural system so this is the diagram which is given in the ncrt of a neuron so a neuron has multiple structures dendrites cell body schwann cell axon and if you go a little bit below you will see there are structures which are known as axonal terminals so these all structures have a different function they all work a little bit different they have a little bit different function so that a neuron can work as a whole system so let's start with dendrites dendrites are like your branches of a tree okay so if this is a if this is the stem of the tree these are the branches the function of dendrite is to intake the information to intake the information any information which is coming from here 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 anywhere the dendrite would intake that information and it will pass on to the cell body so dendrites what is the function of dendrites to intake the information to receive the information now your cell body what is the function of your cell body your cell body would process that information so your cell body would process that information okay now your cell body will relay that information to the axon so if your cell body of the neuron decides that it has to pass on the information towards the next neuron or towards the next uh, whatever the structure may be it may be a muscle it may be a neuron if the cell body decides that yes it wants to pass on the information it would give that signal to your axon so your axon would act as a relay so your axon would relay that information axon would relay that information now the information which was received from here processed here relayed here it finally reaches towards your axonal terminal your axonal terminal would transmit that information okay dendrites received that information cell body processed that information axon relayed that information axonal terminal would transmit that information transmit to maybe a next neuron or maybe a next skeletal muscle or a smooth muscle or any involuntary organ so your axonal terminal would transmit axonal terminal would transmit okay so the transmission is a different topic altogether you will learn it in detail later uh, under the topic of synapse so your synapse can be electrical or chemical and it contains neurotransmitters and all that we'll discuss in detail later okay now let's see what all kinds of neurons are there so based on the appendages we learned that there are different appendages of a neuron there are dendrites and there are axons so if the neuron contains more than equal to two dendrites and a single axon it would be termed as a multipolar neuron so it has multiple poles it has multiple dendrites and a axon these are the neurons which are present in your cerebral cortex cerebral cortex which is the most important and most the biggest part of your brain contains the multipolar neurons then there may be bipolar neurons bi bi means two so obviously there would be two appendages so there is a single dendrite there is a single axon classical example you have to learn it you can't afford to forget it the example is retina so in your retina there are bipolar neurons okay so classical example if someone asks you so if the examiner asks you where are the bipolar neurons usually found so your classical answer should be retina so they would contain one axon and one dendrite now the third type is a unipolar neuron uni means one so there is only one axon no other appendages only a single axon they are found classically in embryonic stage okay now based on the structure of axon if the axon is covered with something or not covered with something that something is myelin sheath like let's take the example of a copper wire so a copper wire can have insulation around it or it can be nude like that there may be a copper wire which is not surrounded by anything 
so if the first copper wire which has a layer of insulation around it is more efficient in transmitting the information in transmitting the current okay but the second uh, the second one the copper wire which doesn't have any insulation it would lead to information loss like the current doesn't have a specific direction to go into it will spread everywhere so you can learn it like this like your neurons if the axons contain a layer of insulation around them their efficiency of transmission increases so those neurons which are covered by a layer of myelin that insulation is basically a fatty substance which is known as myelin so those neurons are known as those axons are known as myelinated axons okay myelinated axons if the axon is not covered by myelin not covered by the layer of insulation then the axon is non myelinated okay now we'll learn in detail about it later that which structure lays down the myelin sheath what are the differences between myelinated and non myelinated neurons we'll learn it learn it all about in detail later let us now focus on the most important topic for today and which you have to understand in order to retain that information that is your generation and conduction of nerve impulse nerve impulse can also be known as action potential so nerve impulse and action potential are one and the same thing so what leads to a generation of a nerve impulse or a action potential we'll understand it today okay first of all i'll tell you something about what are excitable cells like we learned neurons are excitable cells skeletal muscles are excitable cells cardiac muscle is excitable cell what is excitable cell basically excitable cell is any cell which gives some response if you apply any stimulus to it okay that's a very basic definition for example there is a muscle and you poke it with an electrode and the muscle contracts so what happened basically you provided a stimulus in the form of a electrode you touched it to the skeletal muscle and skeletal muscle responded responded in the form of contraction then i would say the skeletal muscle is excitable why because it provided a response when i gave it a stimulus same with neurons if you gave a proper stimulus the stimulus may vary the stimulus for a cell type may be something and for another cell type it may be it may be a different thing all altogether that's not a problem the stimulus may vary but if you provide a stimulus and the cell responds it means the cell is excitable same with neurons if you provide a stimulus and the neuron responds that means the neurons neuron is excitable so neurons are excitable cells so and uh, what is the reason behind their excitability like their membranes are in a polarized state so what do we mean by polarized state polarized state is like the concentration of different things is not uniform it is higher in some places and lower at some other places okay so if we take the example of ions for example sodium ion potassium ion or charge for example positive charge negative charge it is not spread uniformly around the neuron no at some places the ions are more the charge is more the charge is more positive at other places the ions are less the charge is less the charge may be less negative or less positive okay so this leads to a state of polarization this state is known as polarized state so how does polarized state occurs in a neuron so when a neuron is in resting state it means no stimulus is yet provided to a neuron the neuron is resting and it is like okay when the stimulus would arrive i'll give some response now let me rest okay at that stage the concentration of different ions is not uniform the concentration of some ions is greater towards the outer side of the membrane the concentration of some ions is greater on the inner side of the membrane okay so in the resting state if this is the neuronal membrane if this is the neuronal or axonal membrane axonal membrane this is the fluid that is present outside this is the fluid that is present in the cytoplasm of the neuron which is also known as exoplasm okay so here there is relatively higher concentration of sodium ions but lower concentration of potassium ions okay so fluid outside contains higher concentration of sodium ions but lower concentration of potassium ions 
exactly opposite is present in the exoplasm. The potassium ions are present in very high concentration. Potassium ions are very high, but the sodium ions are very low. A third thing, the exoplasm contains negative charged proteins. Negatively charged proteins. You must all know from your chapter of biomolecules, the proteins can be either negatively charged or positively charged based upon the concentration of specific amino acids which may be negative or which may be positive. So if a protein has more negatively charged amino acids, the protein becomes overall negatively charged. Okay, so such type of proteins are present in the exoplasm. Let me give you an example, a real life example. Consider a club. There's a club, the nightclub, uh, and there are couples which are inside. Okay, there are couples like a girl and a boy which are present in, inside the club. In addition to those couples, there are many girls which are present inside the club, okay? And there are many boys which are present outside the club, which are waiting to go inside, but which are not allowed to go inside right now, okay? So in our example, the club becomes the exoplasm. The couples, the girls and the boys, they become the negatively charged proteins. The girls, they become the potassium ions. And the boys which are present outside the club, which are being stopped from entering the club becomes the sodium ions. Okay. There are some bouncers. You know, you can't enter anything from anywhere. Okay. If you want to enter the club, you have to go through the doors. You have to go through the gates. But on that gate, some bouncers are present. Like bouncers are present. Ki, stop. I won't allow you to go inside. Okay. Those bouncers, what are those bouncers? They are channels. They are ion channels. We'll learn about it in detail just a, uh, just a bit later. So now your concentration of your sexes, the boys are present more outside, the girls are present more inside. The boys want to go in, the girls want to go out because their concentration difference is very much high. You know from your earlier classes that movement always occurs from higher concentration to lower concentration. All right. So your boys that are your sodium ions want to go inside but their movement is barred they are not allowed to go inside during the resting state similarly your girls which are your potassium ions are present inside and their movement towards the out is very much limited as soon as a stimulus would be applied so in our example for example if someone comes and gives the uh, gives the bouncer some money like you allow these boys to go inside okay that money is the stimulus for that bouncer in our example in real life that money is the stimulus for that bouncer in the neuron the money is a stimulus a electrical stimulus a charge and your bouncer is the voltage gated ion channel voltage gated ion channel what do we mean by that a voltage gated ion channel as the name specifies will only open if the voltage reaches a minimum value that minimum value is known as the threshold so for example if the bouncer says i'll only open the gate if you give me a thousand bucks i want to open it for anything less or if you give me even two thousand or three thousand or four thousand bucks i'll open it so my minimum my threshold is thousand bucks same with the voltage gated ion channels it would say if you provide me with this much stimulus this much intensity of stimulus i'll open if you provide anything below it, I would not open. If you provide anything above it, I will still open. So there is a certain threshold which needs to be crossed if the voltage gated ion channel has to be opened. This phenomena is known as all or none phenomena. It would either open or not. It would either open or not. There is no in between. Like there is no key. Okay, I will open just a little then I will stop. No. It will either open or it won't open. It depends upon the stimulus. If the stimulus crosses the threshold, the gate would open. If the stimulus doesn't cross the threshold, the gate would remain closed. Now, what do I mean by the voltage or the potential or the threshold or the charge? So let's first of all learn about the resting membrane potential. The name specifies at rest, resting, membrane, neural membrane, potential. Now, what is a potential or a potential difference or a voltage? In physics, you must have learned that when there is a separation of charge, if at one place positive charge is higher and at other place the positive charge is lower or the negative charge is higher, it means 
there is separation of charges then a potential difference develops all right you must remember it like you must know it from your earlier physics classes also if charge is separated then a potential difference develops same happens here i told you that sodium ions are present relatively more outside potassium ions are present relatively more inside but there are also negatively charged proteins which are present inside so what happens is the outer side of the membrane gets relatively positively charged the inner side of the membrane gets relatively negatively charged so there is a separation of charge it leads to a development of potential difference that is known as your resting membrane potential and how much is it in the case of neurons and how much is it in the case of neurons the resting membrane potential is around minus 75 millivolts minus 70 or minus 75 millivolts okay at rest you know that sodium is more towards the outside and potassium is more towards the inside there's a specific protein there's a specific pump which helps in maintaining this concentration gradient that is the sodium potassium atpase pump okay sodium potassium atpase pump what would this pump do sodium potassium atpase pump it would use energy by hydrolyzing atp and it would pump three sodium ions from inside to outside simultaneously it would pump two potassium ions from outside to inside it is pumping the ions against their concentration gradient so there are more sodium outside and less inside still it is pumping sodium from inside to outside and just the reverse with the potassium ions so it is working against the concentration gradient and you know if anything has to be pumped against its concentration gradient then it can only be done actively it can only be done if we provide it with energy so that's why sodium potassium atpase pump is a active pump it is a type of active transport okay now let's return to our example okay so in our example this membrane was the wall of the pub wall of the club which is separating the boys and the girls the sodium ions were your sodium ions were your single boys your potassium ions were your single girls plus we had some couples you know the boys and the girls together they are your negatively charged proteins in our example so now your sodium wants to go inside the boys want to go inside but they are barred they are not allowed to go but when a proper stimulus is applied when a stimulus in the form of a charge in the form of a potential is applied the voltage gated sodium channel will open and it would open very fast the voltage gated sodium channel is very fast in action so it would open within a split second so in our example the bouncer is given 1000 rupees the bouncer is given 1000 bucks and he'd open the gates all the boys would try to rush in all the sodium would try to rush in at once so so much sodium goes inside that the inside of the membrane now becomes positively charged so as soon as the stimulus is applied the voltage gated channels are forced open so all the sodium tries to rush in so so much sodium enters inside the cell that the inside of the membrane now becomes relatively relatively positive as compared to your outside of your membrane so there is reversal reversal of polarity the membrane was earlier positively charged outside as compared to your inside now it has just reversed the outside of the membrane has become negatively charged as compared to your inside of the membrane so this phenomena is known as reversal of polarity again the resting state was polarized state i told you polarized means this concentration gradient like sodium was present more towards the outside and potassium was present more towards the inside now this has just reversed the membrane polarity has just reversed so this state is known as depolarized state 
so earlier it was polarized now it is depolarized okay so now there is depolarization of the axonal or the neuronal membrane this electrical potential difference with which was earlier the resting membrane potential which was minus 75 millivolts now it has reversed in direction as well as magnitude so earlier it was minus 75 millivolts now it would reach up to a maximum of plus 30 millivolts so that electrical potential is known as your action potential or your nerve impulse the maximum potential reached the action potential has a diagram like this i'll show you just in a bit the action potential the maximum potential is the peak potential and it is around plus 30 to plus 40 millivolts in case of neurons okay so now let's return to our example now what has happened is so much sodium has gone inside like so much boys has gone inside like the bouncers are afraid of their job the bouncers are like if i allow all the boys to go inside my owner may fire me like, to make the club so crowded so he'll he'll at just after a second will close the gates again he'll just stand like this and say no more entry no more sodium can go inside no more boys can go inside now there are some boys, some sodium ions which are trapped inside the club and a few are left outside. Okay. Now what happens? The girls, the potassium ions, they are like, it's too much stuffy inside here. There's so much crowd. Now they want to go out. So they will have some other bouncers. Let's say there are some female bouncers. There are some female bouncers. They'll go to her and tell her that we want to go out. So female bouncer is like, okay, I'll let you go out, but I'm a little bit slow. I'm a little bit older in age. So I'll move the gate a little bit slowly. So she'll move, move open the gate. All the girls would rush out. Why? Because their concentration gradient is asking them to go from inside to outside because they are more towards inside. So as soon as the gate opens, the voltage gated potassium channel opens, all the potassium tries to go out. All the girls try to go out. Just as we talked, the female bouncer is a little bit older in age. So she'll close the gate even slowly. So when around X molecules of potassium were to go outside, now around 20% more or 30% more go out than was required. Then what would otherwise have been? Okay. So now if we see the action potential in the form of a diagram, in the form of a graph in which we plot voltage or the your potential difference on the y-axis in millivolts obviously and your time on the x-axis in milliseconds. So this was your resting state. The resting membrane was the resting membrane was chilling at minus 70 millivolts. Okay, okay, I am at minus 70 millivolts. As soon as some stimulus would arrive, I'll notice if it is more than threshold, I'd fire or I'll keep on resting. Okay, so membrane is resting at minus 70 millivolts. Some Someone comes, a guy comes and gives the bouncer 200 rupees and the bouncer is like, no, I want to open for 200. So some stimulus was applied, but it was a failed initiation. Nothing happened. Another guy comes and he gives the, and he gives the bouncer 500 rupees. So the bouncer is again like, no, I want to open it for so less. So it was also a failed initiation. Then a guy comes and he gives the bouncer exactly 1000 bucks, 1000 rupees. The bouncer is like, okay, now I'll open the gate, but only for a split second. And I don't care how much of you can go in, but I would close the gate very fast. Okay. So as soon as the gate is opened, all the sodium tries to rush in. So much so that the membrane potential first reaches zero. Membrane potential first reaches zero. Then since more sodium is going inside, the membrane potential reverses and it reaches a maximum of plus 40 millivolts. This is your peak potential. This is your peak potential. Now. Here, the sodium channels are closed. Sodium channels closed very fast. Sodium channels are closed very fast. No more sodium can go in. Now, your potassium channels, your voltage gated potassium channels would open. Those channels would allow potassium to go from in to out. So, potassium would go, go from inside the cell to outside the cell. It would lead again to membrane polarity being reversed. So it would again start coming down, it would reach 0, it would reach negative, 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 it would reach minus 70. But as I told you, the potassium channels are little bit slow to open and to close. So they should have closed here, 
but they didn't because the bouncer is a little bit elderly so she is like i'll open and close the gate very slowly so the gate starts to close but still more girls more potassium go out it leads to hyper polarization this stage state was polarized state this state was depolarized state this state was repolarized why because polarization was being achieved again so this is repolarized state but as soon as the polarization the potential difference which is even below minus 70 the state is known as hyperpolarization this state is known as hyperpolarization okay so now what has essentially happened what has essentially happened i have drawn a diagram so earlier the red ones are your sodium ions the green ones are your potassium ions earlier sodium ions were present more outside potassium were present more inside okay the charge was more positive outside then more negative inside as soon as a stimulus was applied here a stimulus applied sodium rushed inside because sodium is positively charged na plus positively charged it leads to reversal of polarity the charge inside becomes more positive as compared to outside okay then what happened the potassium channels opened the potassium channels led potassium from inside to outside potassium is also positive so as more potassium goes out as more potassium goes out the outer membrane becomes positive and the inner membrane becomes again relatively negative but charge wise it is okay it is all right it was here also like this and it is here also like this but the ion concentration is disturbed more sodium is present inside and potassium is present outside we have to restore the balance the sodium has to be pumped back out potassium has to be pumped back in and here comes the action of your sodium potassium atps pump so your sodium potassium atps pump it would take three sodium ions and pump them out and in exchange it would take two potassium ions and pump them back in so again after a moment of some time your ionic concentration would be regained as your resting membrane potential okay so this is your action potential in a crux a little bit something else how action potential travels along the exon so we learned about a point here was reversal of polarity and action potential developed but it has to travel forwards no it has to travel forwards too so how would it be achieved you all know from your physics that if there is a separation of charge and you provide a path if you provide a path the current would flow from positive to negative charge if there is a separation of charge and you connect them with a conductor there will be flow of current from positive to negative so now let's see what happens here as soon as membrane was depolarized the inside became more positive the outside became more negative just adjacent to it just adjacent to this portion where the action where the membrane is still it resting membrane this the charge is in opposite direction the outside is more positive and the inside is more negative you have provided them with a path the axonal membrane acts as a path so current flows outside it would flow from here to here positive to negative inside it would flow from here to here positive to negative so after some time the polarity at b is reversed the positive charge reaches here and the positive charge from here goes back here so it would become negative and it would become positive all right why uh, why that happens because you provided the charge with a path the positive charge traveled from here to here and inside from here to here so after a after a certain time there would be reversal of polarity at b the site b would now become positive inside negative outside so we can say the action potential has reached from a to b now again just adjacent to it the charge is again more positive outside more negative inside so the current would flow in the same direction and after a certain time the action potential would reach c so this whole process would continue till the axonal terminal that's how action potential reaches 
from point A to point B. What happens at axonal terminal is a topic all uh, altogether very different. That is the synapse, synaptic transmission. We will learn it in detail about later. But today I wanted to talk to you about your action potential, the generation of your action potential and the transmission along the axonal length of your action potential. So to summarize, what happened, essentially what happened was you disturb the balance of the charges. You disturb the balance of the ions. The sodiums were the sodium ions were present more towards the outside, less towards the inside. Potassium were present more inside, less outside. You just reversed them. So the membrane became depolarized. Due to depolarization, the current spread from point A to point B. So action potential spread from point A to point B. And to reverse the polarity, the sodium potassium ATPase pump worked and it pumped three ions from inside to outside and pumped two potassium from outside to inside. It led to again the membrane reach its resting membrane potential and be ready for another stimulus. Okay. I hope you got it. Now I hope you won't have any doubt. Thank you. Thank you so much.